Hey folks, it's Ray at DCRamRecord.com here, and today I'm going to walk through converting your Garmin Vector 3 pedals into Rally SPD-SL, so that's the road version of Shimano uh, road cleats, or SPD, which is the typically mountain bike or gravel uh, bike version of Rally. Uh, now what's cool about this is you don't have to buy a brand new pair of Rally pedals. You basically buy this conversion kit. And the conversion kits are 200 bucks for the uh, road version. So in other words, SPD SL is 200 bucks and SPD, mountain or off-road typically, is 249 bucks. And within that, you get a uh, complete set of new pedals uh, as well as new battery pods. Uh, and then you take your existing Vector 3 spindles and stick them inside them. Uh, now this isn't like some sort of hack or anything like that. This is 100% supported by Garmin. And really a key thing they wanted to do when they went to the new Rally uh, product lineup, which basically just think of Rally as like Vector 4 or like Vector 3 Plus. It's almost identical. There's a couple minor quirks in the spindle itself, uh, primarily around battery life more than anything else. And there's some minor tweaks in the battery cap as well. In fact, if you bought Vector 3 in the last like six to eight months or so, you would have actually got the new Rally battery caps in there, but you'll get them in the box anyway, so it doesn't really matter. Now this video isn't a review of like the pedal themselves. My full Rally review is up in the corner there. Super long video with tons of accuracy information and other details on all three pedal types. Okay, so to begin, let me just show you what you get in a Rally conversion kit box. Uh, this right now you're seeing is the SPD uh, version. Now I've already been using this to convert this a bunch of times back and forth. So I'm pretty darn good at, at this point converting these pedals, uh, but I wanted to show you the contents because by now the pedals are a bit dirty because I've been using them for a while. And then it's the exact same contents in the SPD SL conversion kit. Uh, in this case, what we're going to do is we're going to convert one of the SPD pedals and one of the SPD SL pedals. Obviously, you just rinse and repeat for the second pedal, but I want to kind of show you both of them. It's pretty easy. I've got a Garmin Vector 3 set right here. These are my own pedals, uh, and I've had them for three or so years, I guess now. Uh, and then after all this, we'll jump outside and I'll show you some data uh, from that as well. So to get started here, we have got a Garmin Vector 3 pedal. Nothing special about that. I'm gonna move this stuff out of the way for right now because we don't need that at the moment. Uh, and we got some tools that we need because I forgot. Here is the tools on the screen and exactly what you need. It's probably things you have around your house. You probably have a pedal wrench. Uh, you probably have a Allen key. You probably have the right wrench to remove this bolt. Uh, if not, it's not that expensive. I'll put links to all the tools down below there, uh, but nothing here is super complex. And you likely have some sort of torque wrench, uh, especially if you probably had vector uh, one or two, uh, but maybe less so with Vector 3. Uh, so with that, we'll go ahead and we need to remove the battery cap first. This is piece right here. Uh, so take the Allen wrench, pop it out. There we go. There's our two batteries and our battery cap. Uh, so take this and we can move this off to the side for now. We don't really need that anymore for the moment. Oh, hey, and a quick note, if you're finding this video useful or interesting or something like that, whack that like button or hit subscribe at the bottom. It really helps out this video and the channel quite a bit. Uh, and then inside here is like the battery base and you can see it uh, right there. There's two little tiny screws there. So now we take our, I think it's a PH00 screwdriver. It's a really small screwdriver though. And we go in there. Now I found that this can be a bit snug at first. You might want to hold the base down here to get it out. Uh, and then you got one screw or not. And I got the second screw. There we go. And the battery cap is out. It's kind of handy if the screws stay in there so you don't lose them. We'll put those up near that uh, battery set. And at the bottom here, you see this nut. Uh, so it's right there. There we go. That little nut, that silver nut. Uh, now on the right, sorry, on the left pedal, um, it is a silver nut, and on the right pedal, it is a black nut, uh, just so you can keep those straight, but do try to keep them straight uh, because it'll save you some time later on. Uh, so now we got to take our uh, little wrench right here, and we pop it in. Uh, now there's a 50% chance that you're going to turn the right direction for this. Um, technically, you could learn in the manual what the right direction is, but it's easier just to try it out. And there we go. That's I just flipped this little switch there to go the opposite way. Uh, and you can see now I'm taking this out pretty easily here. I think that's enough. We'll see if it pops out. There we go. And now we're done. Now keep in mind the bottom of the spindle might just like slide right on out. So just be aware of that. Uh, and you'll pull this out. And this is our spindle. And this is sort of what the magic is. The concept being that you can take this spindle and put it in any of the pedal bottles you want to. So you can put it in the uh, SPDSL pedal bottle. You can put it in a Lokia pedal bottle that you already had it in. Uh, or you can stick it in the SPD uh, pedals as well. So lots of flexibility there. Um, I guess there's really no other pedal types left except for speed play. But that's probably going to happen because of the whole Wahoo thing. So 
Anyways, here's our spindle. I'm just going to put this on something so it doesn't get my table all greasy. There we go. Just like that for the moment. Stay. Uh, and there's our nut. And the only last thing we need to grab out of this is these two little pieces right here. Uh, so there's two ones right there. You've got this flat one. Uh, and then you've got uh, this not flat one with the little wings that you see inside there, four little wing tips. Uh, and so I'm going to put these over here for the moment as well. Keep those off the side. Uh, and at this point, we can take our uh, vector pedal and just move it out of the way. We don't need it anymore. And now we're going to go ahead and grab one of our SPD uh, pedals because I have right here the left pedal. Uh, and so I'm going to grab my left pedal. So this is this one. Here we go. Uh, and the way you can tell, remember, is that this side matches up. So you can see like this. There we go. That matches with that. So we'll take this over here. Uh, and then now what you want to do is to put a little bit of grease inside there. Uh, so a little bit of uh, grease in there. I've got some already in there because I've been changing these literally constantly uh, the last little while. Uh, and you can see I've also got grease already on the spindle. Uh, so that's good to go. Uh, now what you'll do is you'll take the little O-ring back on again right here. And we'll slide it inside there. So just lightly touch it in there. Don't poke it too hard or anything like that. Uh, so now it's in there. Uh, and then for the other piece right here, we're just going to slide this onto the spindle. That's what Garmin recommends. I'm not really sure why there's a difference there, but no big deal. Slide it on. Also, if your spindle is really dirty with like sand or anything like that, definitely give it a clean down first before you stick it back in there. And then we'll just simply slide this in. Be careful nothing catches down below. Uh, and then we'll pop this like that. Make sure all the wings go in. There we go. Perfect. Okay, so all the wings are in. Good to go there. Uh, and then on the back side, we take our little uh, nut. Now you'll see, if you look carefully at the nut, it's got like this top hat side, if you imagine, and then it's got a flush side. Uh, the top hat side goes down into the spindle. So it's gonna go like this into the spindle, okay? And you gotta kinda just put it in there with your finger at first. There we go. Uh, and again, like before, 50-50 chance on which way is the correct direction uh, for righty, tighty, lefty, loosey, because it's opposites depending on which one it is. So you can usually use your finger to finger it out. Uh, so in this case, righty tighty for the right pedal. Oh, check that out. Now I can remember from here on out. Uh, use your finger first to get it in there. Once it's in, uh, you can get this a little bit closer. And then we're going to flip this over because now we're locked. And then use your pedal wrench uh, to hold the pedal in place. And then just bring it nice and tight. There we go. And now I'm going to flip over to uh, my torque wrench. Okay. And this is a bit tricky, but... You can do it. Um, you hold this like this. There we go. And then I'm going to go in. And on mine, we're looking to go to uh, 10 Newton meters on this side, which mine doesn't go to, but I can guesstimate roughly where it is. There we go. And it's about 10 or so. Uh, close enough. And now it's nice and snug. Now all we need to do is put our battery cap back in, our battery base, sorry. So this piece right here, take this, plop it in the bottom. Boop. And then grab our tiny little screwdriver. It's basically a jeweler screwdriver, in case you're wondering. Um, which, you know, like if you got one of those jewelers kit at like a pharmacy or something like that. Like I've got all these stupid kits I seem to buy every time I travel and break something. Uh, like for five bucks or whatever. So those are what you need. Um, and then from there, we go ahead and we put a battery in. Now, you've got two options here. One, you can use your existing LR44 batteries uh, that you would use with Vector probably. But Garmin has actually switched with Rally to these new ones here, which are the CR1 slash 3N batteries. This little tiny thing. It's going to be impossible to camera see that. There you go. Basically a double stacked LR44. In fact, they've supported this on Vector 3 for a while. And people have overwhelmingly had better luck with these than the LR44s. So we take these and we put it in our new battery cap that came with it. There we go. Just simply slide it in and then go ahead and just uh, tighten it in. Make sure you don't feel anything catch. If there's something catch, then there's something wrong. Uh, you know, it sounds obvious, but just keep that in mind. Uh, and then we'll go ahead and just tighten it up a little bit more here. Nothing crazy, just nice and snug. And we're done. It's as simple as that. That's an SPD pedal done. Now we'll go ahead and do the same thing for the SPD SL. Uh, and now in this case, I've already disassembled this to save us a little bit of time here. Uh, so I'm going to move this out of the way. And you can see out comes the spindle. Boom, there we go. And even came with those to make my life a little bit easier. Uh, so this is done. This pedal body will toss over here. Uh, and then now we have the parts right there that we need. And so up here we grab the pedal body. Uh, I'm going to take this off again. Slide it in there, nice and careful. 
Make sure it's down the base. Oh, that didn't go right. There we go. And on the SPD SL, it goes a little bit deeper down than the uh, SPD pedal. Okay. And now we take this and slide it through. Again, I've already got this greased because I've been doing a lot of that lately. And then just make sure its little wings are popped in place. There we go. Now we're nice and snug. Flush across the board there. Perfect. And then on the back side, we take the black nut here again, top hat, if you will, down into the hole. And it's a little bit trickier on the uh, SPDSL because it's a little bit deeper down the hole. Uh, so what I found is that you can certainly use this. And in this case, it should be, I'm just spinning this to the right and it works. Look, I don't, I can't keep track of which is rich. Go until it's tight. It's really that simple. Uh, and then once we've got this, we'll go ahead and take this here. I'm just going to get this snug. Perfect. And then here, until we get to 10 again. There we go. And we're done with that. Now what we need to do is put our battery cap in there. Uh, and so we got to line up these little holes right there with these holes that you see in the base. And pop it down in there. And now a couple of interesting notables here. So at the end of the day, um, your pedal will still be called a Garmin Vector 3 pedal in uh, Garmin Connect mobile app and everything else. It won't say Rally uh, because the spindle itself is where the magic happens. So you're just changing the pedal body and the pedal body is effectively dumb from like a smart standpoint. And there isn't anything on this battery cap here, uh, which was from your old pedal anyways, to indicate what particular type of pedal you have. So keep in mind, it will still say Vector 3. Uh, Garmin says that the Vector 3 firmware that they've had for a while now actually has a lot of the Rally updates kind of quietly in it for things like off-road and stuff like that. Still, there's another firmware coming out pretty soon here uh, that will add a bit more uh, resiliency in off-road conditions, especially for Vector 3 owners, uh, primarily around cadence and how uh, conservative or not conservative it is. Uh, and cadence drives power uh, accuracy on off-road conditions. So those two are pretty well interlinked. So let me take our battery right there, our Rally cap. Oh, sorry, this is a... There we go, rally cap for this one, toss it in, and there we go. You can always get the newer battery caps from Garmin for free. So if you've got an older pair of Vector batteries, I would definitely recommend hitting up Garmin support. They'll send you out a set of the newer battery caps, uh, which in theory, and not in theory, which definitely do improve connectivity issues uh, so that you shouldn't have those anymore. So at this point, we are done. We've got a SPD SL pedal, uh, and we have an SPD pedal right here, all converted over from Vector 3. It's as simple as that. Okay, so there you go, a complete look at that. Now you may be asking yourself, how often would Garmin recommend doing this? And they say this is not like an everyday sort of thing or even like an every week sort of thing, but really like more of a seasonal thing. Uh, and there's nothing wrong with it doing it, you know, every month, for example. But if you did this every single week or like three times a week, you probably eventually break some of these components. Uh, I think in particular, those tiny little screws to the bottom of the battery base aren't really designed for like going in and out a ton of times a year uh, versus if you just did it a few times and carefully so, no problems at all. Still, I think it's super useful for people that want to convert between different pedal types uh, seasonally. So for example, you might be going to gravel bike for certain portions of the year uh, and then back to road bike and kind of switching back and forth. Uh, you can go into mountain if you wanted to, of course, as well. Uh, though I think, you know, for a lot of people, a better mountain bike power meter, though this is just fine for that, uh, is probably like a crank-based one. It's usually a lot cheaper uh, and usually a bit more out of the way compared to the pedals. But you do you. People have been doing, you know, gravel mountain bike power pedal meters for a while now since the SRM X pedals came out, and uh, it seems to be working out for most people just fine. Anyways, if you found this video interesting, whack that like button at the bottom there, or hit subscribe for plenty more sports technology goodness. With that, have a good one.